What is up everybody? Welcome back to Case Digital. My name is Zach and in today's video we are answering the question of how to connect to an SQLite database in Python. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start coding. What is up everybody? So like I mentioned today we're going to learn how to connect to an SQLite database and in particular I have two methods I want to show you because each of these different methods essentially have their own unique purposes on why you might want to use one versus the other to connect and start using whatever database you're trying to use. So essentially there's these two methods. I'll dive into these here real quick. But Essentially, the setup for this video is we have a, you know, this path to a SQLite database, which is just currently in my um, current folder here. And we're going to go ahead, delete this, delete me one. And essentially, we're going to connect to the database. And then there, it's just an, a database with employee information. So I just randomly made up this employee information. So when we run this, we should eventually see that we get a record or all the records. I really have a, just a database with one record in it um, with all the information about the employee. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start talking about method number one of how you can connect to this SQLI database. Okay, so method number one is essentially, you just need to do, uh, run the command of, I'm gonna say connection. Our connection is going to be equal to SQLI3. Uh, I forgot to mention, you do need to come up here and import SQLI3. This path lib one, um, we'll talk about that for method number two, but essentially you'll need to import that as well. But essentially to run SQLI and to connect to it, you need to import this import. SQLite 3. So we're going to go SQLite 3 dot connection or excuse me, connect. And then we're just gonna pass in the path to the DB. Now, what's interesting about this one is when you just run this way and say, and I'm just gonna say return connection, is in Python, if the, essentially if this path, like the path to this file, which the path that we're passing in is this value right here. If it does not exist, it'll just create it for you and then you'll just go from there. But the problem is, is if like in our case, we're trying to do other things, um, we're gonna get an issue. So if I run it as is with passing in this local DB path, which is this um, YouTube SQLite.db file, if I run this, essentially I should get, hey, everything works out in prints. However, if I were to go and just pass in this air DB path, which is just a file called delete me.db, you'll see that when I run this, it's going to essentially connect and, and SQLite Theory will say, hey, it's not there, so I'll just create it for you. And then we'll run into an error because then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna try and get stuff out of it that's not even in the database. And so you'll see that if I run this, that there's the error, hey, no such table employee. So, and, and over here, if you look in my file browser, it created that DB or that delete me.db file right there in the browser for us. Now this has its pros and cons, right? So essentially, if I just was starting from scratch every single time um, and I didn't need to worry about whether or not like it exists, existed, this is probably the way to go. And oftentimes, like when I'm messing with stuff, like I'll, even if it's just simple pro programs, um, I will just run it like this because essentially, like if I'm just, if I'm starting from the very beginning, the first time I run this, it'll create the file for me. And then hopefully I've already gone through the methods and, and, and whatnot to check or added some checks to see whether or not all my tables are in there. And if they're not, you know, import them or create them. Otherwise, if essentially it's, it's, I know it's gonna be there, I know the path exists, and you can do another thing such as like you can check, before you even pass this in, we could verify that that path is there. And then when we pass it into this function, we'll always know that it's good. Um, it, like if it passes, we can just run this function, otherwise we just throw an error. So that's that method, right? Method number one is if you just call connect as is using this one line of code, it'll essentially connect to the database for you with a caveat, if it's not there, it'll create it for for you and you run the risk of saying like in this case where I'm going to go ahead and straight just use it, it may throw an error because hey, that database doesn't doesn't actually exist. So again, if I switch this back to the one that I know that exists, essentially if I run this again, you'll see that hey, my record, I get all my employee information of John Smith. Now, let's go ahead and talk about method number two and how you can maybe possibly, or, or a better way to avoid the pitfalls of having you know to do all these different checks. So let's hop right into method number two. Okay, so for method number two, um, like I mentioned before, we're gonna use the path lib um, as well as the SQLite modules in this one. So we're gonna say path to db is equal to path lib dot path. I'm gonna pass in the db path 
So, and I am just using this because essentially this is going to help me formulate um, my whole absolute path to this file. Because if you aren't familiar with essentially when you use this dot slash, this is basically me from this current directory, there should be a file named, um, oops, there should be a file named, you know, yt underscore sqlite.db. Um, and oftentimes I just like to make sure that I'm using the complete path. So there's no confusion. So that way, you know, if I, if I'm getting a specific file from one location versus another location that we know that everything is is kosher and it's good right and so in this 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 kind of function this module kind of allows you to help easily like create your absolute value now for this method to connect to the database i essentially need um, a file uri um, and i'll split and, and that's also what pathlib allows us to do is it has a nice little function where we can say as um, uri and essentially all this is going to do is like at the front of this absolute path it's going to append the format of like file colon one two three and then like the, the path right and then it'll just give us the whole that whole path right there. Um, and I'll print that out just so you can see what it does like when it runs. So path to DB. And then to connect, we just need to say our connection is equal to, like we did before, um, sqlite.connect. However, the slight difference is, is rather than just straight passing this in, because like I mentioned, if you just straight pass this in and it doesn't exist, it'll create it for you. In this method, this is kind of more of a method to verify that it is actually there, um, where you could essentially wrap this in a try catch and and um, if it doesn't exist, it'll throw an error or throw an exception. Like, if it doesn't exist in this method, it'll throw an exception. So you'll want to wrap it in a try, try accept uh, block and essentially catch the exception and then print out something like, hey, this was not valid. And I'll show you how to do that here in a sec. But essentially, we're going to say we're going to make an F string. We're going to pa pass in our kind of URI. So the path to the DB. Uh, oops, as an F string, we got to do this path to db and then we're going to say question mark mode equals w or rw um and then we're going to pass in and say we're going to give it another parameter of uri equals to true now essentially all this is doing is making it so hey we're going to pass in this file and we're going to give it read write privileges and we're going to pass in the url and like verify like hey this is a file it should be there and what happens is, is when you do a, a, something like this like even if you did URI is true and you just took out this mode W, it would still act as like method one. Um, but if you pass in like a URI file, like give it in a URI format and say, and provide this parameter of URI is true. Like if I run this and say, let's just return connection, return that. And then we'll say, we'll give it the path to the air DB. And then if we run this, what, essentially what should happen is, well, hey, un unable to open the database file exception. Now, essentially you would just wrap this in a try catch. Oops, there we go. Or try accept. And then I will just say so error trying to try, can't spell. Trying to open database, please check that file exists. And then I always like to pass in like the path to db and then for that actually to work we need to make this an f string and then just like just as like a programming practice i always like to like put like in these try connect like try accept blocks like you can see that this variable is being referenced in there and create in there um and then we're trying to return it out here and so just for like scope of things like in python it will kind of it should work or kind of work but i always just like to say like um do something like this so that just kind of covers our bases and so that way you know like it's being ran and then it's giving us in there. All right. So if I run this, I essentially should see like we get um yeah, so we see we see right here. Let me close this over here and then pull this up. Essentially, we got our error. So like like I mentioned, there's our file URI, the path to delete me. It says error trying to open database and then gave us the whole path. And then it and then it moved on. Like another thing you'd probably do in this case is you essentially say exit because what it did is it ex it it um it returned none because it failed. And then it went down to these lines and tried some and tried all this stuff, which is why we get these errors down here. Um, so essentially what you would do is just basically go um, os.sys.exit pass an exit code and that means we need to import OS. So now if I run this, you should see, hey, I get this one error right here, right there, boom. Error trying to fill and then it exited out for us. That's if it doesn't exist. Now, if it does exist, essentially, all you need to do, and we'll just switch this out, or you don't need to do anything, because if it does exist, it's just gonna connect and give us out our information just like method number one. Um, so that is method number two and how you can essentially use that to connect or um, to very, like to force to make sure that that is, you know, that the, that database does exist.
um, with SQLite. Now you could do other things too to, to, to make sure that that you know database file exists because essentially in Python with with SQLite 3 essentially if the database doesn't exist um, it's just going to create it for you and this is just the, the the way to force to make sure that it does not essentially create it for you this is this method right here is the the way to to, to force the connection to ver or to connect to a only valid or, cur or currently available database rather than to just, oh, hey, it's not there. Let me go create one for you and start, you can start from there. Um, so that's kind of when I would use method number two, essentially, is if I like didn't want to make the hassle of doing other it checks and file checks and blah, you know, whatever, like essentially I would just write it like this and then kind of like, if it didn't exist, I it would it would close out and say, hey, it doesn't exist. Otherwise, if I'm just running um, and probably the more common way that people use this is probably just gonna be this one line right here. They're just gonna say, hey, I know this exists, go there. Um, or they'll do different other checks and they won't have to worry about, you know, passing in a your URI formatted string of the database location. So essentially those are the two methods that you can use on how to connect to a database or an SQLite database in Python. So hope this has provided value. If it has, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel because this is where we learn more about Python as, you, as we've talked about here today and just other programming and software uh, development techniques. And until next time, keep on programming.